Hey, it's Brooks with Character Design Forge. These are three drawing techniques for when you're updating character designs. I have three characters that you've seen in some capacity in the past that I've revisited the design of here, and I wanna show you how to go about updating older designs, especially as you improve as an artist. I'm making a few videos in advance for the month of June since I'm spending the majority of the month on the new Learn Character Design course, but this isn't just a speed paint video, even though there is time lapse used. I know that those aren't really exciting. I'll be highlighting specific practical methods as the video goes on. The first design replaces the hummingbird Clem and his bee familiar in an old piece of mine. I was really happy with the confectionery, the background behind him, and I should really be making more pieces of environment art like this, but in order to keep it in my portfolio, I really needed to update the character. Now beyond the rendering being a little amateurish, including the shading, there are some clunky aspects of the design, like the tips of the wings, the overall gesture in the character, and a lot of opportunities to make it more dynamic. And so the first technique involves straight up drawing over top the existing design. And as long as the opacity is low enough that you can distinguish what's new versus what's old, you can find places that you want to update and create new shapes. That's mostly what I did here. I found those clunky intersections, places like the neck, the elbows, and the entire hand holding the honey swirler. I also introduced a few sharp points where needed, since it's always a nice thing to have a little contrast like that. You'll also notice that the shape of the eyes and face are all following a more unified shape of appeal, like I described in my video about appeal. There's an element of using one solution to solve multiple problems when it comes to the shape of the face. At the end, I re-added the bee perching a little more like a parrot on his arm, and while the rendering is a little overdone, it reflects the piece that it's being re-added to. So if you're updating an old design, even if you're just tracing over the old one if it's been a while since you drew it, that can be enough to kind of tell your brain what parts don't feel right, which things you kind of know better about now. Sometimes that can give you not just ways to simplify, but even embellish where need be. A second technique, which I'm showing just quickly through a refreshed version of the Bard Koji here, is actually to, instead of drawing over the last final version that you made, return to its own creation process, almost like you're making a parallel universe, a branching path. And the nice thing about this original sketch here is that it has really broad, simple shapes to work from. And even though this version of the character is a lot more complicated, this drawing definitely has a lot of noodling going on because I was practicing my work with line art, the added layers of detail and complication still work with the underlying shapes. My favorite part of this version of the character is the face as well as the upper arms of his sleeves. In fact, changing this character from having a vest that he's worn for a long time in these designs into something that more closely resembles a bulky cardigan of sorts, I modeled it a little bit off of one of my favorite sweaters that I've worn in videos before, really helped the overall shape and flow of this character. It adds a lot more vertical space in the middle of his design and allows him to sort of droop a little bit more and sag or sulk in a way. And in subtle ways that adds to the personality and disposition of the character, which I'm really happy with. So if you're trying to update or you're not happy with your final character, try walking it back to the original sketch. See what things you could do differently if you started over from some of the simpler shapes and broad aspects of your initial concept. The third technique is actually a little multifaceted. I'll be showing you the update on a character named Enyo, who you may have seen before. He's a counterpart, a rival bard to Koji, and this old version of him is nice with a few shortcomings. So first of all, the upper part of his legs are too ambiguous as just a murky shape of pants, and I think I can get better movement and more clarity if he simply had one prosthetic leg instead of two. Also, I've made the choice where the character in the past was based off of lizards, he is now more firmly bird-based, uh, loosely still. He's still very tall and has bird legs for arms like an Archaeopteryx. The technique here is to find the underlying shapes of the character, like I did here, devoid of the clothing shapes that, in his case, add a lot of extra information and volume. And I actually do this twice. Here, I add the sleeves as they are externally for this pass, but afterwards, I add the arm in another overlay. 
And here I'm able to see that there are more interesting shapes that the clothes, especially the sleeves, can be making. The head gets a little smaller, and the sleeves cut in toward the body more at the top in order to make the head and neck area seem taller, and there's just a lot more flow with this iteration. And since I've been sketching him in different poses as well, not just standing still, I add a little more floof to the tail mass so that there's a more substantial amount of follow through when the body moves and poses. I think it's always important to know what the underlying structure of your character is, and that goes for large bulky plating, armor, or bulky clothing, because when your character moves, the fabric isn't going to move one to one with, say, the upper arm, right? There's going to be wrinkling, there's going to be billowing, there's going to be folding, and all of those things you're going to have to accurately know, otherwise it looks like the clothing or the piece that's outside of your character is just a part of them too, which can look really clunky. And aside from the painted illustration that you've seen me working on for the last little bit here, I just wanted to put these two characters back together, Enyo and Koji. I'm really happy with the way that they sort of contrast and complement each other, and I'm really happy with the progress that they've made since their earlier versions. This illustration of Enyo is part of this month's Biko's backpack as the trading card. We also have a Quilver sticker, which if you line him up with the Biko and Glangor stickers from the past backpacks, they all sort of run in unison together. There's also a Wanderlumen's Lantern magnet, which is three inches, it's pretty sizable, and that Clem's Confectionary illustration from earlier is the mini print. So you can go over to patreon.com slash bageldenizen, select the Biko's backpack tier to grab that this month. And of course, June 30th is the launch of the new Learn Character Design course. You can go to learncharacterdesign.com to learn more about that. It's a comprehensive character design curriculum where I'm teaching you everything that I know about character design so that you can become better at drawing and better at creating characters. Thank you so much for watching and have fun creating. <laughs>